alternating current circuits. So let's start with what is an AC alternating current source. So we show it with this uh, circle and we have this uh, sine wave inside that's basically representing an AC source. So an AC circuit consists of an AC source that is connected to uh, a set of circuit elements. So we have uh, the voltage uh, the provided by this AC source to be sinusoidal. It is delta V max times sine omega T plus a possible uh, phase angle phi. So delta V max is the amplitude of the voltage wave. The root mean square value delta V RMS as we will see later is delta V max divided by square root 2. The angular frequency is 2 pi times frequency or 2 pi divided by the period frequency measured in hertz and period in seconds. <clears throat> Now, when we compare the power outlets in U.S. and Europe, we see a big difference. In electrical outlets in U.S., the frequency is 60 Hz and the RMS value of the voltage output is 120 volts. In Europe, the frequency is 50 Hz and RMS value of the um, output voltage of the outlet is 230 volts. So we have a difference between the two. This is roughly twice the, that of the uh, US voltage and the frequency uh, one is 60 Hz, the other one is 50 Hz. <clears throat> so you can see that if this is our voltage cycle in time, sinusoidal curve, uh, for example at t is equal to zero we are at minus delta V max so that would correspond to a non-zero phi value here so this would have an initial Phase. The period we measure between two uh, maxima or two minima, for example, it's the completion of one full uh, cycle. Uh, for, for this example, when delta V at t is equal to zero is minus delta V max, that means the initial phase should be 3 pi over 2 or 270 degrees. So the corresponding uh, voltage wave is delta V max sine omega t plus 3 pi over 2 for this AC source. Okay, now <clears throat> uh, we said that an AC circuit consists of an AC source connected to a set of circuit elements. We will now look at these circuit elements uh, one by one. Uh, first of all, we will talk about resistors. So what if this circuit element is just a single resistor? So uh, let's say that our initial phase is zero. Delta V max sine omega T is our uh, AC voltage that we're applying to this resistor. And for, uh, of course, this is oscillating. So these uh, uh, poles are changing between plus and minus, but uh, for reference purposes, we can label this plus minus and the current flowing uh, through the resistor uh, will be uh, flowing in the upward direction uh, in the left branch. <clears throat> okay, so uh, delta VR, the voltage that appears across the resistor, will be equal to the AC voltage that we apply. And using Ohm's law, because the voltage across a resistor is current uh, f flowing through the resistor multiplied by the resistance, IR times R is delta V max sine omega T. The current through the resistor is delta V max over R sine omega T or I max sine omega T, where I max is delta V max over R. And uh, uh, voltage across the resistor is I max times R sine omega T, which is that also equal to delta V max sine omega T. Now, <clears throat> what I want you to pay attention to here is the phase relationship between the AC source and the resistor uh, current and voltage. You can see that both the current and voltage uh, are in phase with the uh, AC source voltage. So we don't have any uh, phase uh, relationship. So they are in phase. They oscillate in phase. 
If we were to plot the current through the resistor and voltage across the resistor as a function of time, we would see that the maxima and minima would coincide because they are in phase. The voltage is Ri max sin omega t, delta V max sin omega t. Current is I max sin omega t, which is delta V max over R sin omega t. So this has a smaller maximum value. I max delta V max over R is less than delta V max. So that would be this lower curve here. So the current would oscillate between plus and minus I max and the voltage plus and minus delta V max in phase. So this is what we would observe. Now, <clears throat> if we have a phase relationship between the AC source and the circuit element, uh, we can describe this phase relationship using what we define as a phaser. A phaser is a vector whose length is equal to the maximum value of the variable and rotates counterclockwise at an angular speed equal to the angular frequency of the variable. So we said that the current is I max sine omega t. So if we draw the current phaser, current phaser is basically a vector that has a magnitude equal to I max, making an angle of omega t with the x-axis in the counterclockwise direction, so that the instantaneous value of the current is given by the projection on the y-axis. So I max sine omega t would be equal to I r. Similarly, if we look at the voltage phaser, the voltage phaser uh, is going to have a magnitude delta V max, making an angle omega t with the x-axis so that the projection on the y-axis, delta V max sine omega t would be the instantaneous value of the voltage delta V r. So the projection of these uh, phasers, of these vectors onto the y-axis give their uh, instantaneous values. And when we show uh, the voltage and current as vectors on this diagram here on the xy plane, uh, the y-axis corresponds to the instantaneous values of current and voltage. The x-axis is our reference axis. We call this a phasor diagram. So we're drawing a phasor diagram for a resistor. Now we talked about the maximum current is equal to uh, delta V max over R. Um, now we can also define the root mean square current, the root mean square current, as the name implies, we first take the square, then we take the average value, and then we take the square root. So square root average square, root mean square current is uh, defined uh, with this equation. And if we want to calculate what is the root mean square current, it would be the uh, square of the current, so we have I max square sine square omega t, which will be averaged, so we will take an integral over one period divided by the period, and then we take the square root. So I max square, square root gives us I max, and uh, the integral of sine square it can be found by replacing sine square with 1 minus cosine 2 omega t over 2. So remember, cosine 2 omega t is uh, 1 minus 2 sine square. So minus sine will become 2 sine square. 2's will cancel. So this will be sine square. So uh, this integral, when we perform, will become dt over 2, which is t over 2 between 0 and t. This is just the period over 2 minus... Uh, 1 over 2 cosine 2 omega t dt. The integral of cosine 2 omega will give us a 1 over 2 omega. So this will become 1 over 4 omega. And the cosine is the derivative of sine. So this is sine 2 omega t. Evaluated between 0 and the period t. At 0, sine is 0. Uh, for one period, it's also equal to 0. So this will give us, because this is 2 pi over t, t's will cancel. Sine 4 pi is 0. Uh, so this will just give us, uh, with the cancellation of t's, 1 over 2 square root. So this will be I max divided by square root 2, the RMS value, which is 0 0.707 I max. And similarly, the voltage RMS value is delta V max over square root 2, 0 0.707 delta V max. Now, why did we define this root mean square quantity? That has to do with the power. The power delivered to a resistor is given as I square R. 
uh, and when we take its average value, we basically see that the power, average power we deliver is equal to R times average value of I square, which is R, uh, also in the form Ri square, but this I is not the instantaneous current value, it's the RMS. So Ri RMS square is basically describing the average power delivered to a resistor. Okay. Uh, note that the average value of the current, if we consider the average value of the current, that would be zero. But uh, because the power we deliver is proportional to the square of the current, uh, the average power we deliver is non-zero, and it is given by IRMS squared times R, and this is precisely why we have defined this root mean square quantity. So we see that an alternating current with max I max amplitude causes an energy transfer to heat up a resistor and the effective heating is equivalent to that of a DC source that delivers I RMS. So if I had a DC source, a current source that produces this I RMS current, I RMS squared times R would be the power consumed by the resistor. So it's Basically, this is equivalent to saying that I have a DC source with this current uh, instead of saying that I have an AC source with an RMS current given uh, by this quantity. Okay, and the average value of the current is once again zero, so we need the average of the square to, in order to talk about uh, power. Okay, let's look at an example. What is the RMS current? The voltage output of an AC source is given by the expression delta V is equal to 200 sine omega T, where delta V is in volts. Find the RMS current in the circuit when the source is connected to a 100 ohm resistor. So in this case, we have an AC source. AC source is given by delta V, a voltage wave with amplitude 200 uh, sine omega T, it has no initial phase given in volts and this is connected to a resistor with resistance 100 ohms. So we can calculate the current flowing through the resistor IR by dividing delta V with R using Ohm's law. So this will become 200 divided by 100 uh, sine omega t and it's in phase with the voltage. So this will be 2 sine omega t in amperes. And what is the maximum current that flows through the resistor. From the sine wave, I can see that the maximum current is 2 amps with the amplitude of this wave. And therefore, the RMS uh, current is basically I max uh, divided by square root 2, as we have seen. So this will be equal to 2 divided by uh, square root 2. So the answer we will find is IRMS is equal to 1.41 amps, which is 0 0.707 times uh, the maximum current, uh, 2 amps. Okay, all right, so uh, we have introduced an alternating current circuits. An alternating current circuit consists of an AC source that is connected to other circuit elements. The AC source provides a sinusoidal wave with a possible initial uh, phase. It has period T, frequency F, angular frequency 2 pi F, delta V max is its amplitude, and RMS value of the voltage it produces is delta V max over square root 2. And this has a value, RMS value, 120 volts in US with frequency 60 Hz, 230 volts in Europe with frequency 50 Hz. And we have seen that it is possible to have a non-zero initial phase. If the circuit element that we connect to the AC source is a single resistor, the uh, current through the resistor uh, is linked to the voltage across the resistor using Ohm's law, V is equal to IR, uh, and uh, 
we see that the phase relationship between the current and the voltage uh, is uh, there is no phase difference so basically they oscillate in phase the maximum current is find, found by dividing the maximum voltage difference with r and then we have seen that uh, we talk about an rms current which is calculated by square root taking the square root of average of the square of the current and that gives us basically uh, i max over square root 2 or 0 0.707 i max uh, we have introduced the current and voltage phasors as vectors on the xy plane where their projections onto the y-axis represent the instantaneous value of the current and the voltage. Uh, we define the angle with respect to the x-axis in the counterclockwise direction, and that's equal to omega t in this case. And the voltage and current phasors are in the same direction. They're oscillating in a phase. And what we have drawn here is called a phasor diagram. And uh, when we talk about the power delivered to a resistor, it's I square R, that's the instantaneous power. For AC uh, uh, source, AC uh, circuits, uh, this power will be, instantaneous power will be uh, oscillating. So we've, we can talk about the average power we deliver, that's just the resistance R multiplied by RMS current squared. Uh, so we can now see why we had to define this RMS current. Uh, that was to talk about the average power. And uh, in one example here, we have an AC source with a voltage 200 sine omega t, sine wave voltage, resistance 100 ohms. We used ohms law to calculate the current through the resistor. We can read the amplitude of this wave as the maximum value of the current, and RMS is found by dividing the maximum with square root 2. So we have the final answer, 1.41 amps.